Okay, here were some solved problems for chapter 23. Um, we're going to be looking for the voltage at point A and the voltage at point B here due to charge 1 and charge 2 respectively. Now the nice thing about voltage is that it's a scalar and you can simply add the voltages together and not worry too much about any directions. So we can write the voltage at A is just going to be the voltage due to um, charge, one, charge 1 plus the voltage due to charge 2 which is going to be equal to k times charge 1 divided by radius 1 plus k times charge 2 divided by radius 2. So that's going to be equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th. I'm just going to pull that out. And then my charge 1 is going to be positive 2.4 times 10 to the negative 9th divided by my radius, 0 0.05 meters, that's this distance right there. And then charge 2 is negative, so I'm going to write a minus 6.5 times 10 to the negative ninth divided by that distance, also 0 0.05. And close that guy off. We can see the voltage at A is simply going to be negative 738 volts. Now we do the same thing for B. Voltage at B is going to be equal to the voltage due to charge 1 plus voltage due to charge 2. And that's going to be equal to K times charge 1 divided by radius 1 plus charge 2 divided by radius 2. Here I've just explicitly pulled the K out, where this is going to now be my radius 1 and this is now going to be my radius 2. And so that's going to give me 9 times 10 to the ninth. that's my k, and my charge 1 is still 2.4 times 10 to the negative ninth. Now R1 is 0 0.08 meters, and charge 2 is negative, so I'm going to pull that guy out in front and say 6.5 times 10 to the negative ninth. and now that distance is 0 0.06 meters. And I get my voltage at B to be equal to negative 705 volts. Lastly, for part C, we're looking for the work that it does, that it takes to go from point B to point A. So we've kind of drawn that there. And it turns out that work doesn't depend on the path. The work to go from point 1 to point 2 is going to be equal to the test charge that you're moving multiplied by the voltage at 1 minus the voltage at 2. If you go ahead and you take a look at equa equation 23.13, um, it's more or less this equation right here, only it's written in phrases of A's and B's. I didn't want to confuse those A's and B's with your A's and B's because um, they're going from A to B and here we're going from B to A. So what we can do is now we can write the work to go from B to A is going to be equal to the charge that we're moving, and that's going to now be the voltage at B minus the voltage at A, and that's going to be 2.5 times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs, that's the charge that we're moving. The voltage at B is going to be negative 705 volts. We're going to subtract off the voltage at A, the voltage at A is negative 738 volts, so really it's going to add. And so the work to go from B to A is going to be equal to 8.25 times 10 to the negative 8th joules. And we ask ourselves, does this make sense? Well, um, the electric force has done positive work because it's a positive charge and it's moving from a higher potential, that's going to be the voltage of B, to a lower potential, point A. Okay, 2336, here we're going to have a, some positive charge on an insulating sphere. We're going to take another positive charge and launch it towards that guy. Actually, I'll just kind of draw that like that, put my velocity right there. We're launching it towards it from initial large distance. It's a key word to look for. And then at the end of the day, I'm going to draw my charge right there. And my little tiny test charge right here is going to come to some distance of 0 0.08 meters away from that guy. 
and you also need to keep in mind that the radius of this sphere is going to be 0 0.12 meters. Now, we can't actually solve this using kinematics because the force is always going to be changing. So what we need to do is we need to use energy conservation. The kinetic energy of the test charge plus its potential energy is going to be equal to its kinetic energy at the end of the day plus its potential energy at the end of the day. Keyword of the large distance is that we can set this initial potential energy equal to zero. Also, as it is at the closest possible distance to the test charge, it's not going to be moving at all. It has given up all of its kinetic energy into the potential energy that it has gained. Now, what we can do is we can write the potential energy of that sphere to simply be equal to the um, to be equal to um, k times little q times big Q divided by the distance from the sphere. Essentially what we're doing when we write that is, is we're treating the sphere as just a simple point charge with a um, with a charge Q on that. The reason why we can do this is because we're uh, at some distance away from it that is larger than the radius of the sphere. We can also write the kinetic energy to be equal to one half mass velocity squared. So really just kind of setting these guys equal to each other, k, q, q divided by r is going to be equal to one half mass velocity squared. I can very easily multiply both sides by two, divide by both sides by mass, essentially get rid of those two guys, and take the square root of both sides to isolate the velocity. So the velocity is going to be equal to the square root of 2k q big Q um, divided by mass and radius. One thing to be careful of with this radius is it's going to be the distance from the point charge to the center of the sphere. So this radius is going to actually be 0 0.2 meters, where what I've done is I've added together 0 0.18 or 0 0.08 and 0 0.12 to get my radius because we're treating the sphere just like a point charge. So going ahead and plug all this stuff in, the velocity, put a little tail there to indicate it's not a potential, it's going to be 2 times 9 times 10 to the 9th um, times the little charge, 3 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs times the big charge, 5 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Draw that guy all the way out there. Divide that guy by the mass of 6 times 10 to the minus 5th kilograms. And then the radius, 0 0.2 meters, as I indicated earlier. And so the speed is going to come out to be 150 meters per second. Okay, and lastly we're going to get some practice using partial derivatives. Here we're given a voltage and we're asked for the electric field. Remember, kind of in general, the electric field is going to be equal to the negative gradient of the voltage. But here we're just looking for the components, and so we could just go ahead and write um, the E component of X is going to be equal to the partial derivative of the voltage with respect to X. And so that's going to be the partial with respect to X of the function. We're given the functional form to be axy minus bx squared plus cy. And we can explicitly break this guy up and say this is going to be equal to the partial with respect to x of axy minus the partial with respect to x of bx squared. And then plus the partial with respect to x of cy. And again, remember, with a partial derivative with respect to x, we are treating all the other variables, y and z, to be equal to a constant. So we can just really kind of pull those guys out. So we can say that the partial derivative of this guy with respect to x, a is a constant, y is a constant. It's just going to be the partial a times y multiplied by the partial with respect to x. And that's just going to be 1, so we're left with a y. We have our minus guy right there. b is a constant, so we're taking the partial with respect to x of x squared. 
So that's going to be uh, 2x multiplied by the constant b. And then the partial of cy with respect to x. c is a constant, y is a constant. There's nothing that um, has an x on there. So the partial with respect to x of constant is just going to be 0. So at the end of the day, we're left with the x component to look something like that. Now for the y component, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the partial with respect to y of the voltage, or the partial with respect to y of the function axy minus bx squared plus cy. And in this case, what we're doing is we're treating any of the y's or any of the x's, a's, b's, and c's as constant. Um, and y is what we're taking the derivative partial with respect to. So you take a look at this first guy right there. You, a and x are constant. You pull them out. You take the partial with respect to y. And we're left with a times x partial with partial of y with respect to y is just 1. Take a look at this guy. We'll take the partial with respect to y of it. b is a constant. x is a constant. So that's just going to be equal to 0. And then this last guy right here, c is a constant. You pull that out. Take the partial with respect to y. And we're left with a c. So that's going to be the y component right there. And lastly, let's take a look at the um, ez component. That's going to be equal to the partial with respect to z of the voltage. And you take a look at you know, the function right there. None of the parameters depend on z, so they're all constants. And so we're really just getting zero electric field in the z direction. And now for part B, we're asked for where is the electric field going to be equal to zero? Because we can write it as a sum of its components, what that's really saying is, is EX must be equal to EY, which must be equal to EZ, which must be equal to zero. So all the components must be equal to zero. Well, let's do the easy one first. Where is EZ equal to zero? The answer to that is going to be everywhere. Where is E? y going to be equal to 0? Well, ey is going to be equal to ax plus c. So ey is going to be equal to 0 when x is equal to negative c divided by a. Now where is ex going to be equal to 0? Well, ex is equal to ay minus 2x B. So that tells me that this is going to occur when y is equal to 2bx divided by a. Just did a little bit of rearranging. But x will only be 0 when it's equal to negative c over a. So I can take that and plug that guy in there. So it's going to occur at negative 2bc divided by a squared essentially just plugged in negative c over a for x and so that's going to be my y value so it will only be equal to 0 when x is equal to negative c over a and y is equal to negative 2bc divided by a squared